Welcome back everybody. This is part three of our basic statistics for chemical engineers in Excel. Today we're going to be looking at how to make a box plot in Excel. Now there are lots of different programs that you can use to make box plots. Uh, the stats programs are generally a lot better and a lot faster at this. So if you really want to do a lot of box plots, I would recommend it pursuing this in a stats program such as Minitab or R, but you can also do it in Excel. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. So a box plot is, is another way to quickly visualize variability between different data sets. And so this is based off of the quartile range of our data. So the quartile range basically just encompasses the variability that we have in the data set. So how much of our data is between uh, in that middle 50% of our statistical distribution. So if you want to learn more about box plots, there are lots of resources online. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some of Excel's built-in functions for calculating the quartiles. So this is just equals quartile. And then we're going to highlight our data set. This would be our Y variables. And then we need to tell it which quartile we want. So the lower part of our box plot is going to be the first quartile. This is um, the lower edge of our box. Then we can do the same thing to calculate the median and the third quartile. So we're going to lock that on the rows because we're going to end up dragging this over for columns. So we want the columns flexible, but we want the rows fixed. And then we're going to copy that down and then we're going to just change the quartile. So our median line is going to be at 2. That's a that's a 50%. And then our third quartile is going to be at 3. Okay. The range is just the difference between the third quartile and the first quartile. And we need that value to calculate our whisker lengths on our box plot. So the whisk, so the max whisker is going to be our first quartile. I'm sorry, our third quartile plus 1.5 times our interquartile range. And then our minimum whisker is going to be our first quartile minus 1.5 times our interquartile range. And that that 1.5 is just fairly standard for box plots. You so what we're going to do then is now we can copy this, click and drag it over, and we can get that same data set the same data points for our second data set, operator number two. Now what we need to do is actually do a little bit of tweaking so that we can actually graph this using a stacked bar plot, bar chart. So Q3, let's start with Q1 actually. So Q1 is going to be essentially the same thing because that's going to be the lower edge of our chart. Q2 is going to be the median minus Q1. And Q3 is going to be the third quartile minus the median. Okay. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to make our max whisker and our min whisker. And so that is the max whisker is going to be our max minus the third quartile because it's going to start at the edge, the upper edge. And then our min whisker is going to essentially be the same. It should be the same length because of the way we calculate it. But that is going to be the first quartile minus the min whisker length. Okay. And then we can click and drag these over. And it will do the same calculation for our second data set. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take those values and we're going to insert a stacked bar chart. So we're going to go over here to the bar chart option and we're going to do a 2D stacked bar chart. All right, so what this gives us now is that the quartiles are actually this, the, the columns and that's not really what we want. What we want is for the series to be our our. Um, individual bars and we want the quartiles to be our series on the chart. So what we're going to do is we're going to select data and we want to switch the row and the column. All right, so let's do that and see what happens. Okay, so the problem here is that our quartiles are showing up at the bottom of our chart, which is not what we want. So we need to fix that. So we're going to go back to select data and we're going to change the order so that Q3 is in the bottom and Q1 is on the top. And if you want to, you can actually give it the labels underneath as well. So we're going to label the horizontal axis with our operators. Then we'll click OK. 
All right, so this is the basic format of our box plot. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to delete the title, is we're going to, this, this region is the blank gap underneath our box plot. So we are actually going to remove the color. So we're going to go to Format Data Series by right clicking. Then we're going to click on that. And we want to go to the Paint Can. And we want the fill to be none. So we're going to say no fill. OK. And then what we want to do next is we want to add in the whisker to our plot. We can also change the fills on this. You can either right click and, and do the paint can, or you can go up to the format ribbon on the toolbar. We're going to change the fill to a different color. Maybe we want that one to be darker, and we want Q3 to be lighter. Well, you can do it however you want. Or you could just keep them the same color and then put a border around them. It's really up to you. I kind of like to have the color difference so that you can really see. In this case, we have a lot more data set, a lot more variability in our um, above the median than we do below it. <clears throat> our data points are a little bit more tightly congregated. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add error bars to represent our whiskers. So what we want to do is go to back to chart design, add error bars, more error bars options. And we only want the whiskers only going up from their third quartile. So we only want the plus option. OK, and then we want this to be custom. We want to specify this as our max whisker length. We'll say OK. We don't need the bottom one because we don't have a bottom whisker. All right, so next thing we want to do is we want to do the same thing. And this time we want to do it on our blank box. So we're going to add another error bars. And this time we want it to be minus. So we are going to do the same thing, custom value, looking at this case, our Minwix whisker. And we actually want that to be our negative value. All right, and we can close that. So there you have it. This is a basic box plot made in Excel. Pretty, not too challenging to do that. You don't necessarily need a legend in this case, although you can leave it there. Um, one thing you can also do is we could add the average to this chart. And so let's say we want to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into select data. And we're going to add in the average. So we can highlight that cell to give it the name. And then we can go and we can select those values. And we can say OK. Now what it's going to do is a problem because it's going to put that on top of our bar, but we don't want that to happen. What we want to do is actually make this a second line. <clears throat> so we're going to change the chart type for that, and we're going to make it an XY scatter and see if that works. And actually, for this case, what you want to do is you want to actually make it a line chart. But we don't want the line between it. So again, right click, Format Data Series, take off the line. And so now you can actually get the average positioned on the chart. And you can see that the median in this case for operator number one is actually below the average value that we calculated. OK? So there you have it. Let's do, shrink this down a little bit. We have a box plot that includes both the average the box plot that represents the median and the range in our values. The only thing that we can't really do here easily is to put in outliers. That's a little bit more complicated. We're not going to cover that here. Um, but if you want to do that, I would recommend convert switching over to an actual statistics program. All right. With that, we're finishing up our basic stats. We have a couple of more sections we're going to cover related to linear regressions and using log how to deal with logarithmic and exponential functions. So I hope to see you there.